impactful play styles have always been used by the best of the best and made outplaying your opponents incredibly simple in the process. From the early season evolution of 90s and ramp rushes moving into the mid-season box meta, we now stop here at Season X. Hey, where the 90s, ramp rushes, and boxing up are simply not enough to dominate the lobby. Practically everybody knows how to do these now simple maneuvers, and because of that, we must evolve our own play styles to continue beating our opponents. What do you think? What's good, everybody? It's your guy, your friend, the one and only Keith Allen. And make sure to connect with me on my Instagram when you do so. Hey, just love to inspire you guys to be the best that you can be in Fortnite. And today, we're going to be going over the top five current building strategies to optimize and elevate your gameplay in today's competitive meta. Of course, with time, this list is going to change. So keep up with our channel by subscribing with notifications on to never miss a thing. It's been great. Also, before we get right into it, I just want to let you guys know that ProGuys is offering many in-depth courses similar to this video at ProGuys.com. So by purchasing the InstaPro Pass, you get access to an entire library of content tailored to elevate your gameplay. Guys, you do not want to miss an opportunity like this, as the InstaPro Pass comes with up to five live coaching sessions with real Fortnite pros. Amazing. Link is at the top of the description. Anyways, you guys ready to hop into this? Let's go. Time and time again, you're going to find yourself up against a sweaty soccer skin who cranks 90s to build height. Instead of contesting height with retakes that'll surely draw on a third party attention, finish the fight quicker and use less resources by going for the good old fashioned chop. You know, these days, I really go for height retakes that you see on a face sways channel in a scrim scenario. You know, it's just too risky given all the things that could go wrong, yet I see so many people engage in fights that go 15 stories up or higher. I don't know if they think they're Superman or anything, but that's what they do. It's enough to surely get both opponents dropped down and killed by a third party. Instead of contesting others for height using retake strategies, first try to identify weak points within the building structure itself, then break them. Then secure high position. Hey, this is going to keep the height of the fight relatively tame, not waste all of your builds, and still give you the same result, which is high ground. The reason this makes my list is because it's so simple yet so effective. If you wanted to take it to an even further level, okay, take a look at clicks and a solo scrim endgame. All right, check this out. Clicks gets ramp rushed over and loses high ground, but he still wants the alpha positioning, right? Instead of build battling for height, which would have surely caught the eyes of the entire lobby, he goes to chop the builds down and his opponent falls to a more exploitable position. The kicker here is that in a lot of scenarios, you won't even have to fully break down the builds to get your opponent to drop down, as the sound alone is scary enough to just get your opponent to stop cranking and start dropping. Sounds like a song. <laughs> This is exactly what happens here in click scenario, which leads to a much easier kill in comparison to the former plan. Okay, okay, so with that being said, let's move on to our number four. When owning a wall, stair, or floor directly between you and your opponent, your brain might be telling you to make a quick edit and school on your opponent. In Season X, however, most adversaries are all too familiar with this play. You might find yourself getting one pumped in the face one too many times after making this hasty play. If so, then this alternative maneuver is right up your alley. All right, so jumping into number four, this is something that I personally struggled with a lot in Fortnite. I'm just being honest. I get control of someone's wall, then make an edit just to eat a pump shot to the head. Has that happened to you? Happened to me. I will typically, you know, just opt out to go for the edit bait reset play, which basically consists of editing as if you were going to take a shot at someone, but actually just resetting your wall quickly. Okay, so this is done so that your opponent thinks that you just made an edit as he gets ready to wind up a shotgun shot. He ends up shooting a freshly reset wall, giving you the opportunity, the perfect opportunity to get some free shots in. Bonus points if you're on a keyboard and mouse where you can actually do edit bait resets much quicker by binding your scroll wheel to resetting your wall. To do this, you're going to want to utilize the secondary binds and set your reset building edit and building edit with both to mouse wheel down. Your primary binds won't change at all, but you will now have the option to simply scroll down to reset your wall near instantly. It feels more comfortable to scroll up. You can just change both secondary binds to mouse wheel up instead for the same results. Typically, you know you want to do these edit bait resets if the person is directly on the other side of your wall, or floor, or stairs, to sell the illusion even further. If you're editing a stair or a floor piece that you're on top of, stand on the bills that would have dropped you down if you would have actually made the edit. Instantly resetting will ensure you that you don't fall through the cracks, but we don't need to tell your opponent that. <laughs> 
All in all, this is a super helpful tip that will surely minimize a huge amount of risk during close quarter combat and give you the small edge you need to outplay your opponents consistently. Now, wall edits are great and all, but if your opponent is more than one tile away from you, then number three on this list will be right up your alley. The Protected Peak Box These days, playing around your turtle boxes in the mid to late game is the only way you're going to find yourself racking up consistent points in arena or tournament play. However, okay, making edits to take shots from within the confines of your box will leave you vulnerable to heavy snipes and AR spam. So to add an extra layer of protection between you and any opponents trying to find a cheeky angle on you, use this protected peek box. You know, getting heavy sniped while peeking my one by one sucks. Man, I just want to get the kill confirm on the guy. I down and bam, heavy snipe to the head sent right back to the lobby. Man, if I have some hair, I'll pull it out. Thank God I like it low. I've gone through this, I'm sure you've gone through this, and it's incredibly frustrating just to say the least. In certain situations, however, this scenario is totally avoidable. Okay, so take a look at this clip from Tifu at the Fortnite World Cup. Community launch pad right there. Great neighbors. Paying attention to what's going on here. Can Tifu make a big comeback for himself here? Okay, did you catch that? Tifu made an entirely new box just so he could peek through the floor without leaving him exposed to the rest of the lobby. <laughs> wow. All right, we're going to rewind this. Take a look at the play a little bit more closely. Do you see how many angles he has exposed? Just one. And that's the angle he's shooting at, which means he typically won't ever see any return fire as nobody wants to initiate a 50-50. And that's really what it's all about. Setting yourself up in situations where you are least exposed to the lobby while still being able to find shots on unsuspecting opponents. Amazing. Obviously, every situation and angle might need a bit of adjusting, but there is still a point to be made. Extending your turtle to give you a maximum safety from center angles is super important to just not just learn, but to master. So making our way up the list, this newer technique sits at number two, low material tunnels. Do you ever find yourself having to tunnel to the next safe zone, only to realize that your material count has depleted to dangerously low levels? You're like, uh-oh. All right, so use this fully protected tunnel and use up to 40% less materials on your next rotation. Check it out. Tunneling has recently become one of the most used metas in Fortnite. Tunnels are used to get from one location to another, right? Safely covering you and your teammates embarking on the trek from one safe zone to another. Having materials, guys, is your lifeblood essentially in Fortnite. Without it, you're practically a fish out of the water. All right, so let's take a look at Stretch's perspective here. He's playing in the Trios Cup with Booga and Clarity G, who both just got recently eliminated. It's up to him to secure the placement thresholds to get him the most points possible for the team. He looks down and notices that he has right around 600 mats, and that's a long way to go to zone. What are you going to do? Well, he thinks fast. His quick thinking allows him to use this advanced tunneling strategy, which in turn gets him to where he needs to be for much less materials than if he were to use the traditional tunneling strategy. I'm not here to say that this tunnel method is what you should use in every single scenario. All right, don't get me wrong. The traditional tunnels, okay, they are in fact just more roomy and have a bit more separation between you and the enemy, since there would be a floor on top of your head. But in these type of situations, this tunnel is just a little bit more safe to get you where you need to be and on a budget. And finally, we made it to the top of our list and Shockwave Plays takes the number one spot. Holding the mid-ground tunnel in an end game, stuck in zone and need a quick out? If you're holding this pesky mobility item recently unvaulted in an all-core and competitive game modes, taking to the skies has never been easier. Use these tips, guys, for the Shockwave to guarantee taking and maintaining control of high ground or simply a safe rotation into the next zone. The Shockwave, my friends, is a very interesting item, similar in theory to impulse grenades, but have that added kick. Using Shockwaves to burst through builds and get you where you need to be is super important in Fortnite scrims, especially in the late games, where everything is just flipped upside down and chaos ensues. Taking a look at Cypher's POV, it's quite clear that the Shockwave has some obvious uses, the main one being height. You can get some serious elevation with this bad boy, which means that you can quickly turn the tables on most early to mid game engagements. But like I said, they're even more useful during end game, so I wouldn't stash them away if you find them on your loot path. All right, so let's bounce back to Booga's perspective. Okay, so he uses the shockwave grenade to send his entire team flying in the direction closest to the front of zone. So this puts Booga and his teammates in the most advantageous spot possible, right? Ready to turn around and bust players that are now behind them having to rotate into the gunfire. Ah, so simple yet so rewarding, man. 
As long as you know when to use them, the Shockwave grenades will increase your livelihood during endgame, and it'll definitely get you closer to that stack dub that you've been working towards. So, you know, at the end of the day, truly mastering the game of Fortnite is an incredibly complex subject, right? With the seemingly infinite routes you could just take in each and every game, there's so much material to master. But on the other hand, hey, keeping up with the newest strategies such as this video is going to put you right on the track that you want to be and help you get to the place where you want to go. We also have a large library of content right here on the Pro Guys channel, so make sure to check them out, guys, and uh, see what we got. We got a lot going on. Check it out in the links down in the description. I'll also throw it out there again, if you wanted even more material to work with, head on over to ProGuys.com and that'll surely elevate your gameplay with even more Fortnite mastery courses along with 24-7 live coaching options that'll fit your needs. Hey guys, once again, this is your guy, your friend, Keith Allen, and make sure to connect with me on my Instagram as soon as you can. We'll love to talk to you. Anyways, hey, hope you enjoyed this video. We would really appreciate if you gave it a like. Subscribe if you like to receive more content like this and turn on that bell to never miss a thing. All right, guys, thanks so much. We'll see you soon.